Hi, I'm Dr. Molly Gebrian, and this video series today is going to be about something called attentional focus. So before we get into all the research and all that, I just want to say that this information is a total game changer, especially for teachers. When I started learning about this, I my mind was blown. I was just like, wow, this needs to be part of our education and discussion as teachers of any instrument. So I hope that you will be as astounded by this as I am and that you will see the immediate implications for teaching. All right, so before we dive into the literature, I want to introduce you to the researcher who is responsible for this body of literature. It's her work that kind of spurred this whole revolution in how we think about where we focus our attention when we're performing, be it in music or sports or anything else where we use our bodies. So I want to introduce you to Professor Gabrielle Wolf. She currently teaches at UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And um, this research was spurred by an experience she had in the mid-1990s with trying to windsurf. So I know nothing about windsurfing, but she wanted to know how to windsurf. And so she had read a bunch of books and magazines and things, and she had learned, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do with my arms and my feet and whatever. Um, to do this and so then she she got out with a uh, on a lake and she proceeded to follow the instructions but she couldn't do it she was having a really really hard time she got really frustrated and in her frustration she was like okay this is not working what if i stop thinking about what my arms and my legs are doing or whatever and i just focus on the board and i focus on like the effect i want my motions to have rather than what i'm actually doing and like instantly she could do it. It was like night and day. And she was like, whoa, what just happened? Is this a thing or is just this like, you know, unique to me? You know, what's going on? But she's a psychological researcher. So she's like, okay, I have a lab. Let's figure this out. Her first study to look at whether this was a thing, right? Changing your focus from what your body's doing to the effect you want your body to have, she did with a ski simulator. So you can see in this video here how it works. Um, so the point is to sort of go back and forth along this track. And um, your goal is to make your movements across the track as big as possible, as wide as possible going back and forth. Some people were told to exert pressure on the foot that is going in the direction that they're going in. So if they're moving to the right, exert pressure on the right foot. If they're moving to the left, exert pressure on the left foot. Other people were told the same thing, but not to focus on their foot, but on the wheels. So exert pressure on the right-sided wheels when you're moving to the right, or exert pressure on the left-hand side wheels when you're moving to the left. You can see from this picture here that the feet and the wheels, they're like really close to each other, right? They're right on top of each other. There's probably a distance of maybe a couple inches, if that. So a very, very small difference in terms of actual measurement. But what they found was exactly the same experience she had when she was windsurfing. The people who were focusing on the wheels did a lot better than the people focusing on their feet. So you can see in this graph here, the external focus, that's focus on the wheels. They're focusing on something external to their bodies. Internal focus is focusing on their feet. So they're focusing on something internal to them, their bodies, their feet. Um, and in this graph, the, the higher the, the data points, the better. Um, and so you can see that they start off pretty much the same on day one. And by the end of day two, and definitely in the test on the third day, the external focus people that are focusing on the wheels are doing a lot better. The other thing that's really interesting is by the end of the second day, the internal focus people, the people focusing on their feet, are not as good as the people who were focusing on the wheels at the end of day one. So two days of practice focusing on the feet is not as good as just one day of practice focusing on the wheels. But again, Maybe this is just a fluke. Like I talked about in my videos about variable practice, being able to replicate things in science is really important. If one study finds something but nobody else can reproduce that result, then it kind of calls that result into question. And so they decided to do another study to try to replicate this with a different 
um, behavioral motor task. This time they used what's called a stabilometer. So you can see in this video how it works. You stand on a platform um, that's kind of like a seesaw and you have to basically um, balance on it and, and make it stay as level and stable as possible. I should note that in the actual study, the people were not looking down at their feet like the lady in this video is. It's just something I found on YouTube to illustrate what they had to do. So again, there were two groups. One group of people were told to focus on their feet and keeping their feet as even and level as possible. The other group of people were told to focus on the tapes that were right in front of their feet and they were told to keep the tapes as equal and level as possible. So there's one tape in front of each foot. You can see again from this picture that the tapes and the feet, they're like right next to each other. The front of people's toe is at the tapes. So there's very little difference in terms of space. This time, there wasn't that much difference when they were practicing, but when they were tested after the last day of practice, they found that the people that were focusing on the tapes, that's the external focus group, they did a lot better than the people who had been focusing on their feet. So in this graph, lower is better. Um, and so same thing, this external focus seemed to work better than focusing on what their bodies had to do. Okay, but what about real world things? Like who cares about a stabilometer or a ski simulator? Like what about actual sports? Um, so not to spoil the punchline, but you find this thing in pretty much every single sport that they have studied. So for instance, in golf, they found that if people focused on what the head of the club was doing, the swing and the motion of the head of the club, that was better than focusing on their arms. So here's a graph of that study. Um, again, the external focus group, is doing better. Higher is better in this case. They looked at it in discus throwing, so they were trying to get people to throw as far as they could. The external focus group focused on the discus. The internal focus group focused on what their arms and their hands were doing when they were throwing. And again, as you can see in this graph, external focus group threw further. Basketball, same thing. They were looking at free throw shooting, and they asked people to either focus on the hoop or to focus on the motion of the wrist, wrist when they released the basketball. Apparently that's important in basketball. Um, and again, external focus group is better. So I'm not gonna bore you by going through every possible sport, but soccer, football, volleyball, running, swimming, like you name it, they've done it. It comes out the same, the external focus is better. Um, and actually, I want to say something about the running study. In the running study, they found that oxygen consumption was lower in people with an external focus, and that is a measure of efficiency. Um, and so that made me think that for wind and brass players, that having an external focus, especially when you have a really long phrase and it's hard for breath control, having an external focus will probably allow you to save your breath more and play that phrase more successfully than if you are focusing on your breath or something having to do with your body. So why does this happen? Why does paying attention to what our bodies are doing not work as well as paying attention to the implement of golf club or whatever, or the effect that we're trying to have? So the reason for this, they think, is because when we exert conscious control over our motor systems, when we try to consciously control the motion, we end up doing it in an inefficient way because we get in the way of these automatic motor processes that are just supposed to run on their own without interference from us. And when we interfere with conscious control, we constrain our motor system and we end up doing the motion in a less efficient way. But when we focus our attention on the effect of our action or outside our bodies in some way, we leave the motor system alone to do its thing and it can coordinate the motion much more effectively than we ever could by trying to micromanage it with our brains. This seems to be the case whether it's something brand new you're learning or whether it's something that is well learned. So this idea that paying attention to what our bodies are doing and kind of micromanaging that, that's called the constrained action hypothesis. And there's two other hypotheses that come out of that. The first is that when we are using an internal focus, paying attention to what our bodies are doing, that that is creating a large attentional demand for our brains. So that's the first one. The second is that when we use an external focus, that we're focusing on the effect of our actions or the implement or something outside our bodies, that we should see more efficient muscle use because of that. If we're just allowing our motor systems to do their thing and they're gonna do it more efficiently than we ever could by controlling with our brains. 
So we can test these two hypotheses, right, to see if they're true. And if they are, then that would add further support to this idea of the constrained action hypothesis. To test the idea that using an internal focus, focusing on your body, is using more attentional resources, they did a study with a stabilometer, so that, that um, platform where people had to balance, basically like a, a seesaw, and so they were trying to balance, and they also had to press a button every time they heard a note, every time they heard like a sound, and they were measuring reaction time. The hypothesis was that if they're focusing on keeping their feet stable, their reaction time should be slower to react to that tone because um, paying attention to their feet is taking attentional resources. But people paying attention to those um, little tapes in front of their feet, the external focus, they should be faster to react to the tone because their attentional focus and their attentional resources is not being taken up by balancing. So that's the hypothesis. In fact, that's exactly what they found. So in this graph, what you care about are the circles. Don't care about the little triangles. All you care about is the circles. The lower they are, the better. Um, and so you can see that the external focus circles are the lowest on this graph, which means, yes, paying attention to what your feet are doing, the internal focus, is taking attentional resources away, makes you slower at the reaction time task. To look to see if people also had more efficient motor use, muscle use, they graphed the motions of this stabilometer to see, you know, are people using their muscles efficiently. In this graph, you can see on the top is the people focusing on their feet, so internal focus. On the bottom is people focusing on the tapes, external focus. And you can see on the bottom there are more movements but they are smaller and that indicates more efficient muscle use. On the top they have fewer movements but they're much bigger so people are, are more unstable essentially. They have to make bigger adjustments. But what about something that actually takes like muscular force? Because balancing on a stabilometer, like you don't have to be strong to do that, right? You just have to balance. Um, so what about something that actually takes like strength? Um, so they've looked at this in a couple different ways. One study looked at people throwing darts. I know you don't have to be super strong to throw darts, um, but they identified especially the tricep muscle as the critical muscle for measuring muscle use efficiency. And they attached electrodes to muscles on people's arms. And in fact, they did find in the internal focus condition, there was a lot more um, tricep involvement that was necessary versus the external focus condition. So focus on what the dart is doing, not on what your arm is doing. So again, more efficient muscle use um, in the external focus condition. They've also looked at this with basketball shooting and high jump. So how high can you jump? Sorry, I don't have any graphs. There aren't nice graphs in those studies like there are in the darts one. Um, the jumping one is especially interesting because to jump really high, your legs have to be relatively strong, right? And they found that the external focus group not only jumped higher, but there was less muscle activation in their legs. So more efficient muscle activation jumping higher when they had an external focus, when they're focusing on something outside their bodies. Okay, you say, that's nice, shooting a basketball, jumping high, uh, swinging the golf club, that's all well and dandy, but I'm a musician, what about me, is this gonna work for me? That's what we're gonna talk about in part two.